so at this time, and I'll be right back up as I try to act as your mistress of ceremonies today, so work with me. We are going to welcome Bishop Theodore Jenkins Sr., the presiding bishop of the Progressive Church of our Lord Jesus Christ Incorporated to deliver the invocation and remain standing, please, for the presentation of colors by the City of Columbia Color Guard and playing of the National Anthem. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this day. We are praying today, Father, for your will to be done in the city of Columbia as it is in heaven. We thank you in a special way for those who have already served to our outgoing mayor and our outgoing Congress council members. And as we look to you today, we ask you a special blessing upon our newly elected mayor and the newly elected three council members, that you may bless them and give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to guide such a great city as Columbia. Give them eyesight like an eagle to be able to see a fall so that the city of Columbia can continue to grow and be as good as it should be. Also, Father, help them as they deliberate. Let them be wise as a serpent but yet humble as a dove, that they may attain wisdom and knowledge to guide this great city of Columbia to higher heights and deeper depths. These blessings we ask in your precious name, Jesus Christ, amen. amen.
Again, welcome and please be seated. This is a very special occasion for the City of Columbia family. And we are so thankful for your presence and, of, and all of Columbia citizens in person and hopefully watching us at home. Thank you to today's program participants and podium guests. We have, of course, Bishop Theodore Jenkins, Sr., pastor, and we will also hear from Pastor Lucas Jones. Also accompanying us today are Justices Toll, Placonas, Few, and Judge Lee, who I will speak again about later. We also, of course, have our city councilmen, Ed McDowell, Howard Duvall, and Will Brennan. So thankful for them. I would also like to acknowledge several members of our community who are in attendance, members of the clergy, neighborhood leaders, we have elected officials, too numerous to start naming names, so y'all bear with me. I'm always charged with recognizing everyone. And appointed administrators, presidents and representatives from our higher education institutions and state agencies, and members of the judiciary to include our municipal court judges. At this time, I would like to personally thank our former mayor, and mayor, mayors, if they are both here, I don't know if Mayor Coble is here, I know he was supposed to be, but Mayor Benjamin is, and members of city council, if any past members are here, as I see Mr. Davis and his wife, and their families, if they are in attendance, and ask them to please stand. We all know that Mayor Coble's and Mayor Benjamin's legacies will forever be cherished in the city of Columbia. Because I work so closely with each council member, I recognize the sacrifices that they and their families make to serve our community every single day. So, Dr. Bustles and her family, Lewis and her parents, I'm just recognizing you at this point. Um, so one second, <laughs> um, Ms. Herbert and her mother and I think daughter Asada and her husband Jamar here, Mr. Taylor and Mrs. Taylor, Amanda, um, the children, Anna and John I'm sure are here, and of course Mary Let Rickman, Dr. Rickman, Laura, as I've known you a minute, and watch these beautiful girls grow up, Carlisle and Ellie. I want to thank you all, all of you, in advance for your willingness to serve because it is a sacrifice and we appreciate you on behalf of the City of Columbia staff. Um, you, we know you will make many sacrifices as you take these oaths today and commit to uh, making Columbia even greater in everything that we aspire for her to be. With this, moment, we will move into our period for the oaths of office, which will be administered now as outlined on your program. Each elected official will offer brief remarks after being sworn in. So Dr. Bustles, yes. Now, first up, Councilwoman-elect Oddity Bustles at large to be administered, the oath of office to be administered by the Honorable Jean Hepper Toll, the retired Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of South Carolina.
I, Oddity Bustles. I, Oddity Bustles. As a council member of the City of Columbia. As a council member of the City of Columbia. Will equally and fairly and impartially. Will equally, uh, fairly and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And skill. And skill. Exercise the trust. Exercise the trust. Reposed in me. Reposed in me. And I will use. And I will use. My best endeavors. My best endeavors. To preserve the peace. To preserve the peace. And carry into effect. And carry into effect. According to law. According to law. The purposes for which I have been elected. The purposes for which I have been elected. So help me God. So help me God. And now will you take this constitutional officer's oath for the state of South Carolina. I, Oddity Bustles. I, Oddity Bustles. Do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. According to the constitution of this state. According to the constitution of this state. To exercise the duties of the office. To exercise the duties of the office. Of council member of council member for the city of Columbia for the city of Columbia and that I will and that I will to the best of my ability to the best of my ability discharge the duties thereof discharge the duties thereof and preserve protect and defend and preserve protect and defend the constitution of this state the constitution of this state and of the United States and of the United States so help me god so help me god congratulations thank you Well, it ended up being a beautiful day to celebrate the future of our capital city, and I am incredibly grateful to be here, joined by friends, family, and leaders in the community today. Columbia's history is unique and it is special, rich with diversity, innovation, and compassion. It's no secret that we've faced adversity, but we've come together and we've overcome it. We've come out better for it. Those chapters are written. We now have the opportunity to turn the page and write Columbia's next chapter together. There's much work to be done to make Columbia a real destination to live, work, and play. And I've continued to listen and learn from community leaders and city staff to ensure that our government is transparent, is responsive, is accessible. My promise to all of you is that I will be a councilwoman who makes informed decisions that not only represents the diverse perspectives in the city, but addresses the root causes of problems that our communities are facing. I deeply believe that meaningful solutions will not come from inside those chambers alone. They'll come from places like our communities, our neighborhoods, our small business owners, our schools, our churches, our civic organizations. And to all of you, my door is always open. Our campaign was helping people realize Columbia's bright future. We set, out a, uh, we set out to create a new way of doing things that works for everybody in this city. I worked tirelessly to meet voters all across the city, share our ideas, and in turn listen to every single one of them. What I found was that people were excited. They were ready for something new. They were ready for change. They wanted to do things a little bit differently. And that energy is very much here today. And that's what we're going to harness to ensure that this next era of our capital city creates a community and a city that is equitable, vibrant, and thriving. So as we start 2022 together, I'm especially encouraged to see faces representing all corners of Columbia, but I'm even more excited to see people in the next generation of leadership and folks that came out today that have never ever gotten involved in local politics until this cycle. Maybe some of you have had that thought that spark, that idea that you can do something to serve your community. But maybe you've also had that doubt, that persistent anxiety. My advice to you is this, you are capable. Do it and do it to the fullest extent. 
This community needs people who believe in something better for our families and for our neighbors. Trust me, I know it's not easy to step out of your comfort zone and make a difference. Because from the very start of my campaign, many people told me I couldn't do it. Many were skeptical that I could bring people together from all walks of life and different political backgrounds. I was a political outsider, but I kept going. Why? Because our community is worth it. Columbia is worth it. South Carolina is worth it. So as we celebrate this next chapter of our city and renew our energy for the upcoming year, I'll leave you with this. As citizens of Columbia, it can be easy to get discouraged or find ourselves willfully disengaged in the process. It's really easy to say, I give up, but we can't give up. I realized in my journey to city councilwoman is that when it feels like the whole world wants to dim your light, that's when you work the hardest. It's our time to shine, Columbia, because we will find common ground, we will work together, and we will put our citizens first. Our momentum is unstoppable, our future is vast, and our potential is limitless. So, thank you to Mummy and Papa for staying up all night to brave the DC storms to be here today. Thank you to my husband, Lewis, and my Columbia family for taking this journey with me. Thank you to my team, my friends, and all of you for being here to witness this special moment. I am so honored to be your councilwoman at large and follow in the footsteps of two phenomenal women, Ms. Tamika Isaac Devine and Ms. Franny Heiser. Mayor Benjamin, Councilman Davis, Councilwoman Devine, thank you for your service to the community. To our amazing city staff, thank you for being so quick to pivot and make a safe event for everybody. And Columbia, thank you for believing in me. I'm incredibly honored and can't wait to get to work. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilwoman. Well, next up, we will have the oath being administered for Councilwoman Atlet Tina N. Herbert, District 1, administered by the Honorable Allison Renee Lee, a circuit court judge. As a council member of the City of Columbia, as a council member of City of Columbia, I, Tina Herbert, I, Tina Herbert, will equally, fairly, and impartially, will equally, fairly, and impartially, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and skill, and skill, exercise the trust reposed in me, exercise the trust reposed in me, and I will use my best endeavors. And I will use my best endeavors to preserve the peace. To preserve the peace. And carry into effect. And carry into effect. According to law. According to law. The purposes for which I have been elected. The purposes for which I have been elected. So help me God. So help me God. And now to the oath from the South Carolina Constitution. I, Tina Herbert. I, Tina Herbert. Do you solemnly swear? do solemnly swear that I am duly qualified that I am duly qualified according to the constitution of this state according to the constitution of this state to exercise the duties of the office to which I have been elected to exercise the duties of the office to which I have been elected and that I will and that I will to the best of my ability to the best of my ability discharge the duties thereof discharge the duties thereof and preserve protect and defend and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of this state. The Constitution of this state. And of the United States. And of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, hello, Columbia. I am so tremendously humbled by the opportunity to serve our city, the city of Columbia. It is the city that I was born and bred in on the other end of this main street. It is the city that I graduated from high school from. It is the city where my daughter was born. It was the city where I had my first job as an attorney, and it is the city where I bought my first home. And so it is an honor to be here, but as you can tell, I could not be here all by myself. I could not have done it by myself. And so I certainly want to thank all of my family and friends. I want to thank our campaign staff. Uh, we had some really awesome volunteers, and like uh, Ms. Wilson said, I will not list names. Um, <laughs> And I also want to thank our donors and our members of our $25 club, which was um, spearheaded by my mom, and of course my family. Um, and I have two families now, um, my Mickle and Bass family, which is my firm that has allowed me to be here. And then we have my birth family, the Herberts and the Crumlins. You all do not want to mess with the Herberts <laughs> or the Crumlins. Um, and of course, um, I, have, I wouldn't be here but for my dear mother, who has always been my biggest cheerleader, and then my daughter, Asada, who I just call my ride-or-die chick. I, I get to call her that. Um, and so I'm forever thankful and I'm grateful to be here. And because you all have sacrificed and supported me, then I am more than committed to making sure that every citizen in the city of Columbia, no matter where you're from, no matter what side of town you live on, no matter how much money you make or money that you don't make, that you know that you have access to quality education, that you have safe housing, affordable housing, that you have vibrant communities, and that you enjoy your city, the city of Columbia. And so I do want to make sure I acknowledge our outgoing council members. Um, Councilman Davis, thank you so much um, for your leadership and the road path that you have given me to go forward. Um, I want to thank Tamika Isaac Devine because the simple fact that she ran let me know that I could do it too. And then of course, my former boss, thank goodness, my former boss and dear, dear, dear friend, Mayor Benjamin. Um, you gave us a challenge. You gave us a challenge in your last um, council meeting, and your challenge was to lead boldly. And I took that to heart, and what I also know is that is exactly what you did, including the revitalization of downtown and this very main street that we are able to sit here at today and enjoy. I can see the fruits of your labor. And so to your challenge, I will say, Dude, I accept, all right? <laughs> and to Daniel Rickerman and our other council members and Ms. Wilson, um, I am still very honored to work with you all. And I'm excited about the future of the city and the things that we would do together. <sighs> mayor Rickerman, you are now, you now have to be my mayor. And that's a big, that's a big ask. Um, but I'm so looking forward to us being able to do the things that I know we can do together and the things that we agree on. I'm also looking forward to some great spirited debates. Um, but what I do know is that each and every one of us are doing this because we care about our city and we care about making sure that our citizens live in a vibrant city and have the things that they need. So Columbia, I am so, again, so tremendously humbled by the opportunity to serve and let's get to it. Thank you. She said, so it starts. So she took her seat up here. Yes, ma'am, it starts right now. Um, and with that, our next council person to be, Councilman Alette, Joe E. Taylor, Jr., District 4, to, to have the oath of office administered by the Honorable Costa M. Placonis, retired Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of South Carolina. Left hand on the Bible, raise your right. 
As a council member of the city of Columbia. As a council member of the city of Columbia. I, Joe E. Taylor, Jr. I, Joe E. Taylor, Jr. Will equally, fairly, and impartially. Will equally, fairly, and impartially. To the best of my ability and skill. To the best of my ability and skill. Exercise the trust reposed in me. Exercise the trust reposed in me. And I will use my best endeavors. And I will use my best endeavors. To preserve the peace. To preserve the peace. And carry into effect. And carry into effect. According to the law. According to the law. The purposes for which I have been elected. The purposes for which I have been elected. So help me God. So help me God. All right. Now the constitutional oath. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. According to the Constitution of this state. According to the Constitution of this state. To exercise the duties. To exercise the duties. Of the office. Of the office. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. And that I will. That I will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties thereof. Discharge the duties thereof. And preserve. And preserve, protect, and pro defend, protect and defend the Constitution of this state, the Constitution of this state, and of the United States, and of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, all right, gang. Y'all noticed when Judge Pocono said peaceful, he winked at me. <clears throat> Wow, let me say first, thank Amanda and Ann and John. I mean, what do they say? Behind every successful man, there is a, a strong woman, and that's certainly true in my house. And I'd like to give a special shout, shout out to my 96-year-old father-in-law who planned on being here today, World War II veteran, but because of the temperatures, he's watching from home. So just want to say a tribute to all of our veterans out there, especially Mr. John Walker for his duties in World War II. And I want to thank Judge Paconis because he's been a longtime friend and a great leader for our state. I want to thank the citizens of District 4 and the many supporters that, uh, that I've had across the whole city that made this possible. And I've said this many times over the last several months, and I learned it when I was the Secretary of Commerce, that frankly, local offices, Mr. Mayor, local offices play a bigger role in people's day-to-day -day lives than I think any other position really in government. And, uh, and I'm delighted to see the folks behind me, and the mayor, the new mayor, our sheriff, police chief, because that's the kind of leadership we all deserve, you know, in our, in our local offices. Let me just say Columbia is my hometown. Wouldn't have what I, what I have today if it weren't for the bankers here, the business community here that mentored me, and just the general support that my family have received over the years. And this is, frankly, nothing more than for me a chance to give back to the city I love and make sure the opportunities today are just as good for you, for your children, and for your grandchildren as they were when I came home after college. You have my word that over the next four years we'll work to become a safer city, a more business friendly city, a more beautiful city with better schools and better roads and lower taxes. Thank you. Oath of Office for our Mayor-Elect Daniel J. Rickman to be administered by the Honorable John Cannon Few, Justice of the Supreme Court of South Carolina. As mayor of the city of Columbia. As mayor of the city of Columbia. I will equally, fairly, and impartially. I will equally, fairly, and impartially. To the best of my ability and skill. To the best of my ability and skill. Exercise the trust reposed in me. To exercise the trust reposed in me. And I will use my best endeavors. I will use my best endeavors. To preserve the peace. To preserve the peace. And carry into effect to carry into effect according to law according to law the purposes for which i have been elected 
for the purposes of which I have been elected. So help me God. So help me God. And now the constitutional oath. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I am duly qualified. That I'm duly qualified according to the constitution of this state. According to the constitution of this state to exercise the duties of the office of mayor of the city of Columbia. To exercise the duties of the office of the mayor of the city of Columbia. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. And that I will. That I will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties thereof. To discharge the duties thereof. And preserve, protect, and defend. To preserve, protect, and defend. The constitution of this state. The constitution of this great state. And of the United States. And the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mayor. You know what they say in Columbia, well, well, well. Um, first of all, I want to thank Columbia. I want to thank everybody for being here on this cold January day. I want to thank my wife, Dr. Laura Rickenman, my two daughters, Ellie and Carlisle, for all your support that you've given me. And thank you to all of you who have shown up today. You know, when I first moved here, I fell in love with this city. I went to school here, I met my wife here, I raised my family here. We chose to make Columbia our home. Columbia is a great city. All over this capital city, you'll find kind, hardworking people. When I graduated from USC right up the road, I saw all the opportunities this city had to offer. The conditions were right for building and growing a business, and the people of Columbia were inviting and supportive. As an entrepreneur, I could not help but notice the inefficiencies in the way our city operated. The experience I had with government here that had enlightened me to unintentional barriers our systems had created. So I ran for council to make a change. I wanted it to be easier for people to live, work, and raise a family here. Before I was even sworn in, I went to work in every department of our city. I wanted to learn about our departments, their processes, see what could be improved. I had been on a ride along, I had driven a garbage truck, I've been down a manhole, and yes, I have looked over the books in accounting. This showed me that there were opportunities for growth around every corner. It didn't discourage me, but helped me strengthen my sense of pride in our city, in our people, and it gave me hope that Columbia's bright future, just ahead, working together, we can open up our community. Make it a place where opportunities are for every person in every corridor in every neighborhood that can happen. In Columbia, we will have open arms for everyone. We'll be a compassionate city that doesn't help people just get along, but helps every community thrive. We will make sure that our sidewalks and our streets and our schools in every corner of this city are clean and of quality that make residents proud. We will provide a hand up to those in need in our streets so that they can stand up on their own. We'll increase home ownership, create generational wealth so that the future generations get a head start. We open up our arms to those in danger, make our streets safe to walk in in every neighborhood at any hour. Columbia will be open for business, folks. We will make it easier to start a business here, invest in our great city and its people. We will work towards reducing taxes and fees that close the gap that there are between surviving and thriving. It shouldn't take millions of dollars to take advantage of an opportunity in this city. It should only take determination and effort. We will make our city government modernized and streamlined so that our systems and our processes don't delay a chance at opportunity for our citizens. We will work with our great universities and colleges to showcase the talent in our city. Let's make Columbia a place where students, a massive economic engine I might say, want to stay, build a business, and raise a family. We will take advantage of every opportunity to make life better for our citizens. Columbia's government will be open and transparent. We will communicate with our citizens so they have a voice in every action we take. 
We'll show the people what's working and what's not. We will share information with the citizens so that, that we'll show where we're succeeding and how and where we can improve. We will work with our partners to ensure that tax dollars are spent wisely and efficiently for, for the benefit of all of our citizens. If you live, work, or go to school in Columbia, you're invested in our success. This is a partnership. We want to work with you. We're going into your community, listening to what your priorities are, and see how we can help. Tell us what you like and what you don't like so that we can see how to improve. We are going to do better because we have to do better because the future of our city depends on our shared success. I want to thank all of you for putting your trust in me to be your mayor. You heard our ideas, our goals, and now you've given us a chance to go to work for all of you. I appreciate this trust. I won't let you down. We will thrive together. As this new year begins, we start a new chapter in Columbia. And I can't help but be excited. The sense of opportunity seems brighter than ever. The next four years will be exciting, and I look forward to getting to work. But I can't go without mentioning small businesses that are the backbone of this community, because today would have not happened if it wasn't for all those small businesses that came out today. Thank you. We support you, and we're glad you're open. So with that, I declare the city of Columbia is now open. We're open for business. We're open for investments. We're open for ideas. We're open for collaboration. And most of all, we're open arms for all. God bless you all and thank you. Congratulations, Mayor Rickman, and yes, Columbia, we are open. I know you see on the board, the board, the video walls certainly show that these small businesses in Columbia, local, um, are right here in our midst, and I also have to extend my gratitude to them because I haven't seen my family much in the last few days when we decided to do this this way. <laughs> And it's okay because we were able to enlist every small business that you see on the board to make this day happen. They've done an exceptional job along with city staff. We have a very capable city team and they all deserve our gratitude for today. Thank you so much. So grateful for the city team. And thank you to my family at home and my daughter who's here. I enlisted her help today too, but we pulled it off. It's a wonder, it was a wonderful event. Um, you heard a little tease a minute ago, so as you depart, please, I think you recognize Columbia's own Hootie and the Blowfish. So Mayor Rickman's favorite um, band and some of his favorite music will play after the benediction, Hold My Hand, One Love, and please find the vendors, these vendors that are on the screen and enjoy some treats that will show the brand, we're open Columbia. Please enjoy the treats as parting gifts. We thank you for being here today. And at this time, Pastor Lucas Jones of the Downtown Church will render the benediction. Pastor Jones. Will you pray with me? God, we come to you today longing for your vision of community to be realized. For we know the challenges that we face are great. But in this new year, God, we are also hopeful that with each day, this world might become more just. With each night, this community might become more safe. And with each moment, we might gather up all of our gifts and passions to continue to work for a city that embodies compassion, justice, and hospitality. God, we know that you did not create us to be divided. You did not create us to be Democrat or Republican, left or right, but rather you created us in your image to be peacemakers, caretakers, and people of love. We thank you for all those who serve this city no matter what uniform they wear. And today we give thanks for these elected leaders of Columbia. 
We ask that you walk beside them in their service. Give them strength when they are exhausted. Grace when they make mistakes. Wisdom when they are faced with complexity. Resiliency when things get tough. Hope when the world feels hopeless. And vision to lead this city forward as a place where all people can prosper. It is you, God, who created this magnificent and intricate world. Help us today to be its crucial caretakers, starting right here in Columbia. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, amen. amen. Thank you all. With a little love and some tenderness.